rules and stuff. We'll, uh, we'll kind of kind of catch up afterwards. We get the session. So, my name is Dan Judson. This is uh, charged up. Does deals basically with electricity. Can I ask how many people are new to this? All right, the vast majority. How many have done this before? Right there, I see. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, all right. It helps to have done this before. Anybody, uh, the new people, have a background in electricity at all or anything? Yeah, that certainly is going to help them a little bit. So, so the ones that aren't, I'll try to give you as much information as I can. But uh, thank goodness the internet has tons and tons of stuff out there that's very, very helpful. And we also have a very nice website. So. Um, we probably want to head first as far as learning anything. You want to go to macomb.so.org and you'll go to the elementary tab and then we'll, up will come up a bunch of stuff. There will be the events, the rules, there will be questions that if people have been asked in the past. So if you're unsure of something, check the facts first. But if that's not listed in the uh, in the facts, then uh, then uh, certainly submit a question. There's an area where you can submit a question, and usually I try to respond within a day or two on that. Um, they try to limit them to technical questions and not um, like systemic questions and, and stuff like that. So uh, I'm not always sure what questions they forward to me and which ones, how many they uh, they uh, return an answer and say that's not something. Typically address um, tons of information at this website if you go there. But the, and they have first of all, if you click on Charged Up, you're going to see something like this. You can download the rules. If you don't have the rules, the rules look like this. Your uh, supervisor or uh, leader should have that for you. Um, they have the insert from the quick start kit. When you print it out, it looks something like this. It gives you all kinds of this, the material in there, background on the difference between switches and series and parallel and diodes and LEDs. So if you're new to this, this is a great source to get some very, very basic information and get yourself up to speed and so forth on that. They also have the uh, handout from last year. It's almost identical to the one from this year. So it's not a lot that. And then I also, in the handout, I also have some example questions and, uh, and answers. Uh, they have other things like that I find really, really happy uh, or helpful is um, printed out. Um, we don't use scantrons, we use zip grades. They're kind of like a scantron, if you're familiar with it. They have examples of them. Print them out and give them to your kids so the kids get familiar with them. That's one of the best things they can do is, you know, they're gonna answer the same thing that they're gonna answer with me. They're not gonna go, where do I start? Or how do I fill these in? Or whatever the case may be. They give you almost everything that you need there to uh, start and get up and running. Another thing they have is a risk of resistor code sheet like this that is one of the sections, there will probably be five to seven questions on something like this, either at county or at districts or both. Um, the other nice thing they do to help you out, people that are new and even the people that are not so new, is uh, they make these charged up kits. And inside you will get some test leads, you will get um, two sets of battery holders, you'll get a motor, you get a switch, you get some LEDs and diodes, you get some light bulbs, you'll get some resistors to check against this sheet to see what, uh, uh, what they're what I rated at, and then you'll get a battery holder like this. Uh, how many people have this type of battery holder? Have you guys that do do this, that slide together like this? Almost everybody's got that. Um, do you like that? Because mine are, this is the big question I have, is every year I use these, they snap together, they go together real quick. But some kids spend five minutes trying to stick them together and uh, these slide together, but sometimes it takes 10 or 15 seconds to get them together to get them to hook up. So 
Is there any preference? Let me just get a raise of hands. Who wants this kind? I'll go with this kind. If some, you guys want me to continue to use these, I can certainly go with these. So uh, who wants to go with this kind that at least that's familiar with it? If you don't have an opinion, that's fine. You want I, I have three different types, so they're not compatible at all. So I have I can't really work with what I have already. You know okay. I mean? Yeah, well, you might want to pick up a kit, or you can go online and pick these up, or you can pick these up. They're, 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 they're really cheap. They're like a buck 50 bucks. And that's on this? this there, you just do a search for a battery holder, and, and it'll come up. I use carolina.com. It's uh, educational for schools and stuff like that. That's where I've got this stuff at. They don't carry this style, but I think I went to... Uh, Amazon and Amazon carries these as a number of other sites carry these. So does anybody have a preference for these? This is pretty nice. For these? So yeah. So they, they go together in parallel the same. You know, they snap like this. It's not an issue. It just depends on how easy they get to go together like this. And sometimes I see some kids. So I'll I'll probably go with these. Unless I get an overwhelming in the next session, wants these. But um, uh, I just wanted to get an opinion if anybody had any preference. I like going with what kids are familiar with. Like I said, I like these better, but if 90% of the kids have these, I don't want them to struggle, so we want them to uh, be able to uh, uh, perform as quickly as possible. And familiarity is a very important thing. They'll also give you some switches and stuff like that. Um, uh, so they sell them right out there. I don't think they make hardly anything on it. I think there's a little markup where they round it up to the nearest five dollars, but I, I, I don't know if they're 15, 20, 25 bucks, something like that. They're well worth it. But like I said, you can get all this stuff on Amazon too if you want to buy it on Amazon. So the only thing I would recommend is if you guys do go with batteries, um, I buy the heavy duty from the dollar store, and the reason I buy those from the dollar store is the alkaline ones. Kids hook them up wrong and they hook them up backwards like this, the alkaline ones will get very, very hot. So hot that they can melt the plastic and stuff. So, just mm -hmm. as a safety issue, that might be something that you might want to keep in mind. Uh, these don't have enough power to, to do that. If you don't want to hook these things up, either snapping or sliding, you do have the option of just clipping on these edges like this, and uh, that works too. Okay, so I mean, there's there's lots of options if the kids are unfamiliar with them that they can still function and get by. Um, typically, I have um, a section where I have. Uh, Conductors and insulators, and on the tables, you can see some of the common stuff I have, eraser paper, aluminum foil, piece of wood, screws, stuff like that. I ask them to identify if it's a conductor or, an, or an insulator, or sometimes it could be both. The other thing I have that is a little bit more difficult, but uh, is, uh, has uh, usually about 10 or 15 questions on it, is these cards, and they're mystery cards, and all the kids have is a number, like one through six, and I'll say button one is hooked up to which one of these, and it might be A, it could be B, C, D, and uh, they have to either take a meter or build a circuit tester and check to find out which one's hooked up to which. Okay, so, and how they're made is they're just these paper fasteners pushed through some foam board, and there's some examples on the table there, and just run a wire in between them. Running a wire in between is fine. The only thing is after two or three years, that wire gets a little oxide, it doesn't work so good, so I solder mine. So, you know, that's an option if you want to solder them. If you don't want to solder them, that's, uh, that's fine too. Um, and then I just cover up the back so the kids can't see which one's, uh, which one's hooked up to which. I also have a section where I use a multimeter. I get a Sears Craftsman meter. I started this 25 years ago. Who knew Sears would be out of business? But uh, they still sell them online. This model, I don't think Sears makes anymore, and people are charging 40, 50 bucks on that. That's just outrageous. So they have a model that is very similar, and I have that in the paperwork. And I think there's just a couple things in this corner that are slightly different. And like I said, familiarity really helps with the kids, and uh, um, you can get that at Sears. I think it's this week I saw it. I don't know how long it is. I think it's $10. I think maybe $10 or $13. Really, really cheap. 
so it's not a huge expense. Uh, I looked on eBay, I think it's 15 and $5 shipping. So certainly under $20, you could probably get this and use this if you don't have one from last year. All right, any questions on the oh. Um I typically have three types of switches, single pull, single throw. The ones that they give you are double pull, Double, yeah, single pull, yeah, double throw. Pull. Single pull, double throw. Mm -hmm. I always get them mixed up. So it's a single pull, which means one one unit here, double throw this way and this way. And then I also have some of these double pull, <coughs> double throw. So the vast majority of the stuff will use this, but I have used this on occasion. You know, maybe you might have one question in the county or or uh, districts that would have that, and then maybe every other year I use something like. So this is a little bit less frequent if you want to get a full set. And again, these are all online. Only usually a couple bucks, maybe five bucks at the most. Any questions on the equipment at all? Yeah. So the multimeter, does it matter? Like they're, are they, they're bringing their own to turn no, up, right? No. So they got to be able to use that kind of turn. They have to be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it has to be mine. And I don't like having any equipment in there because. They have auto ranging ones, so I mean, I, the whole idea of using a meter is so that the kids have to understand, take a measurement. If they're measuring voltage, use the voltage setting. If they're measuring resistance, use the resistance setting. And I want them to understand if you got an auto ranging one, you plug it in, they use it, they got a number, they're not really learning how to operate, they're learning how to read something off of that. So that's the only reason I use this type. Yeah. Just with regards to continuity checks, do you shy away from uh, the sound enabled continuity check? Are you looking specifically for resistance measurements or if they're looking at something like uh, no, this? No, they, they will think to... I do ask for a resistance measurement too. So, I, you know, I'll ask, well, what's the resistance of okay. this penny, you know, or this light bulb in here or something like that. So you have to know how it works. So not, you know, you know, they'll not only use it for conductivity, but they will use it to take some measurements. Not a lot, but, you know, there could be five questions or seven or eight. That uh, where they have to take a measurement. Yeah. Is that the meter they'll be using? That the this end? is the meter they'll be using. Does that make an audible noise for continuity? Uh, yes. It does have a sound mode, but uh, every once in a while the sound mode doesn't work on one or two. I try to make sure they work on there, but yes, they have a sound mode on here that they can use for continuity. Yeah, and just go right down and check them. Boom, 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 boom. Yes. Something that uh, a lot of the kids learn right off the bat. That's the easy way to do the check on that. Uh, as far as leads go, um, most of them come with these kind of leads, but they're kind of pointy at the end. Kind of makes me a little nervous. So I typically I supply both of them, but I encourage the kids to use this type. One they can grab onto things. So if they have to grab onto a nickel or a penny or something, they can kind of grab onto it to sort of try to hold it onto a round object, particularly a light bulb. It's kind of hard to measure a light bulb with the other ones is when you can kind of grab it and, and, and measure it. And I think it's a little bit safer. But the kids have their options of using either one at the event. It's again, it's familiarity. If I give them something like that and they haven't seen it before, they're just going to say, what do I do with this? So, so um, just to go through this sheet, any questions on anything right now? I, what kind of question might you ask on the double pull, double throw? Um, I probably would have it in a drawing of a circuit and then say, um, which light bulbs are on when this is in this position, which light bulbs are on in this position. That's yeah, the single pull double throw right there. Yeah, right? well you're talking double pull double, double throw? Double pull, yeah, I'm sorry, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, I could do the same thing. I could have a, I could have a circuit drawn with this and, uh, and, and do this. Okay. Like I said, I don't do a lot on this. I wouldn't worry about this one a whole lot, but I mean, they will be on the table and there could be a question on I just don't wanna say, but, but, but yeah, you could draw a circuit on this. I could actually have them also construct a circuit where this could uh, could be used. You know, I could have three series circuits or something hooked up to here, three or four series circuits hooked up to here. One could be an LED, one could be a motor, one could be, and I could say, turn on the motor and the LED at the same time. And so you could do this, and then turn on the standard light bulb and do something like this. So I could, afterwards, uh, that's a higher level question. I'll, uh, I'll be more than glad to answer that maybe draw a little drawing on the board for you so that uh, uh, I can clear that up. Um, there will be no more than eight sessions, just gonna go through the sheet here, there'll be no more than eight sessions uh, at, uh, at, at the, any of the, the uh, tournaments. 
typically I have six to seven at districts and seven at counties. That works really, really good for me. All three district tournaments we use the same questions, so I try to keep it fair for Glens Cruz, South Macomb, and, uh, and Chippewa, and uh, Utica has more of a workshop, so it's really not a, uh, uh, a, a tournament, so the questions there will be a little bit different, similar, but a little bit different. I usually take between five to 10 minutes, explain the rules for the kids, and then uh, that leaves me about two and a half minutes to run the event. I like to make sure that the kids are out two or three minutes in advance in case something goes wrong. We have time for a kid to repeat a station. If something was broken, say the meter was broke or somebody dropped some light bulbs and they didn't work and then someone has to repeat it, they have an opportunity to, to finish the test properly. Uh, for scoring, we'll be using zip grades. I thought I printed out an example, probably sitting at the printer at work, but um, it here but it's similar to a scantron if you have scantron the nice thing about the zip grade is you can download the zip grade app and you don't have to hand score your kids test you could have them fill out the form you could do a correct answer sheet you take a picture of the correct answer sheet you take a picture of the form it grades it tells you which ones the kids got wrong really really quick really really uh, easy so um, and there's a link on the website that takes you to the zip grade app so uh, it just makes things really really easy uh, one point uh, question for true and false. Everything else is, uh, is, is or um, usually if there's only an A or B, then it's one point. If there's three or more options, the questions are worth uh, two point. Usually uh, things like conductors and insulators, where they have an option between a conductor and insulator or both. So that would be uh, something, the meters, um, where they have to take a measurement and then they give them a list of four or five answers. That would be a two-point question. I try to include as many hands-on stations as I can using circuit testers and meters. Almost always they will have to, like I said, determine the conductivity of something even using a circuit tester or a meter. One of the simplest ways to do, uh, make a, uh, a circuit tester is uh, to build something like this. kids when they build this. So when they check to see if something's a conductor or insulator, they can put this to this, that lights up, it's a conductor. All right? So that's typically what I do on one of them. The other one, I'll have the kids use the meters and stuff and take measurements or determine if something's a conductor or an insulator. One thing I want to point out is if you see how bright this bulb is, These are the bulbs they supply in your kit, which are wonderful. Nice and bright, huh? But you can buy these bulbs also. And uh, see how dull this is? So sometimes it's kind of hard for the kids when they're measuring conductors or insulators if they get a dull bulb. Um, I have to include both because some kinds, kids like to put multiple batteries in series. And then if you start putting two or three batteries in series and measuring this light bulb, or if you do this at home and have the kids build a circuit and you have three of these batteries together, this will be very, very bright for about five seconds and it won't work anymore. So that's why I include these so that these don't burn out, but they're not as bright. So if I do a three battery system, I typically use this. If I use one or two batteries, I'll use something like that. So. But just a heads up, if you guys start burning through your battery or your bulbs on here, that's the reason. And again, you can buy these online, right? Different, uh, different wattage bulbs and stuff. And uh, uh, make sure the kids bring a pencil. I do have a lot of pencils. And as long as the kids ask me in advance, they are welcome to take one. But sometimes when I say go, someone raises their hands and I don't have a pencil. Okay, well, we'll lose a minute and a half out of here. Two and a half minutes trying to get you a pencil. So, any questions? Yeah. Are all the um, components and tests going to deal with um, like the clip style wires, or should the kids know how to use a breadboard and wires? No breadboards. Everything's going to be with these wires here. Okay. Everything is, everything is here. I'm thinking of trying to do some stuff with the breadboard, particularly with the, with the, um, 
uh, motors and stuff like that, but um, I'm just afraid that's too much of an investment, too much all at once, particularly for the for the newer parents. So um, we'll we'll see if that, that's something that we do in the future. Um, there will be a section, always has been, where kids will need to draw one or two circuits. Okay, so they need to know the circuits uh, that are in this handout here and how to draw them properly. Okay, some examples in in this thing, and then you can get online. Uh, the two biggest problems I have. Normally, I ask that the kids put an arrow on there. It's not necessary that the kids put the arrow on there. If I can tell a switch is open, that's good. If I can tell a switch is closed, this is about function. This isn't about how pretty the artwork is. The reason I ask them to put an arrow on there is because the kids are timed and they write fast, and sometimes the drawing skills aren't the best, and then I get something like this. So is that open or closed? Well, technically it's open, but if their other switch looks like this, and this one looks like this, i got to kind of think it's closed. So I gotta make a judgment call. And if I make a judgment call, it could be wrong. And if it's wrong, the kids aren't gonna get points. So I ask them to put the arrows on there. If they do that, I will always know that this is normally open, and then I will always know that this is normally closed. And that way, the kids will get the maximum amount for their score. Um, typically, for cross wires, we do something like that. But in the last couple of years, the kids have been very, very good, and we haven't had uh, really too many issues where the wires are crossed. Um, So for the last year, we used schematics for the constructor circuit. It would be something like this. Last year, I gave a description and a schematic. So probably at districts, I'll probably do both. If the kids are more of a verbal type of thing or the guys are, are visual, then they can look at this. It'll be technically the same and decide how to construct it. Um, but probably at county, I'll probably go with just the constructor. So, you know, two-step thing where they get up to speed, but I would hope they would be able to read this and be able to interpret that and construct that um, uh, capably. Um, I think last year or the year before, I gave the kids a choice between two questions on the construct. There was an easy one that was worth 20 points. It was something like a simple series in parallel. Kids only have two and a half minutes, that's great. They can do that. They have participants, there's two of them. Then I gave them a hard question that was worth 40 points. I would say that 90 to 95 percent of the kids didn't do it just because they didn't have time. So it's not that I would encourage the kids, and I always do have them do the easier one, but if they want the most amount of points and they're technically competent and they work quickly because that's the thing they may be able to build this in three four minutes but three four minutes isn't good enough they have to build it in two and a half so um if speed's a factor encourage them to do the easier one and at least get 20 points because this is either 40 or zero and uh you know, that could be a big that could be a difference between you know third place and, and 17th place or something like that so so uh, um, that's up to the kids. I just wanted to throw that out there so that you can kind of encourage the kids uh, where you think their skill level is. Um, the only essay or fill in the blank will be tiebreakers. Uh, these are worth zero points. I always tell this at the start, but I like to have some way that I can break ties and uh, use the tiebreaker system to break ties if at all possible. So if the kids finish a section, then I will ask them a question like, uh, Name as many sources of power as you can, and it would be, you know, dams and power plants and, you know, and that type of thing. And then whoever has the most correct answers would, uh, would uh, uh, solar panels would have would be the, uh, the winner for that that section. But that usually just moves you from fourth to fifth, or you know, sixth to uh, fifth, or something like that. Um, The other thing that many, many teams lost is on batteries. If you look at this, many of the kids do batteries this way. I asked that they put a plus or minus on there. I do not care which side the plus or minus is on because sometimes one side is supposed to be longer than the other and they're not always longer than the other. And the military has the longer one as a positive or negative and industry has the other one. So 
In order to avoid a confusion, I don't ask for one or the other. I just want to make sure that they are there so that I can say that that is a battery and if they have the plus or minus on there, they need to have that. The other thing, and it's increasingly important because diodes also need to have a plus or minus on it. A diode only typically only lets, and that includes LEDs, typically only lets electricity go one way, not another way, okay? So if you don't show me the plus minus, I can't tell you if they did this right. It might, if they try to construct it, it might work, it might not work. But if they know the plus and minuses are lined up properly, then we know it's going to work. I have some examples of the uh, uh, switches there. Uh, the double pole single throw, I don't think I ever use them. Like I said, rarely if ever use the double pole double throw, but I mean, they should be aware of what it looks like. Uh, these are the two that I use by far most often, the, uh, both of the single pole versions. Um, here's an example of uh, uh, where the diode would work on a circuit. We use it, as I mentioned, the electricity goes in one direction, uh, and then also example of an LED. The nice thing about the LEDs, when I do include diodes in there, at least on the construction part, I like to use LEDs because an LED should light up. I mean, you can rub it on the floor, it's not gonna break. So if the kid's got it hooked up right and the light's not on, they probably need to switch it. That's the first thing they can do it quite often. That's the case that they have the clarity on and, uh, and so forth. This is the model of the meter that I use, the E2146. Uh, item number, they have a three in front of there. But the E2141, like I said, is in about $10 at Sears right now. I don't know what shipping is. In 15 at Amazon, and I think Amazon had $5 shipping on that. So that's that. Anybody got any questions? Yes, sir. I was wondering about the uh, the math. Like, what kind of numbers are the kids going to be working with? What is it, the math? Yeah. You, know, uh, you mentioned it, adding things up, but it, what kind it, of numbers? It's adding and subtraction. So okay. I would ask, what's the resistance of a series circuit? And so they would have to add things up. They're not going to be asked to figure out the resistance of a parallel circuit because that recalls the division, and I'm not sure how many third or fourth graders are as right. adapted to the division as the others. So we just try to keep it to the simple stuff so that they understand the concept, not that they're necessarily the strongest in that. So, all right. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. This is so foreign to me. Yes. This is my very first experience Absolutely. with Science Olympia. Yes. Yes. I was asked to be a coach. Yes. I got assigned this, and I'm like, the girls are coming to my house on Tuesday. What do you want me to do? Like, is there a lesson plan? Do I? I have no idea yes. what and, I'm and, doing. And unfortunately, that's hard, and I get that question every year, and I would love to give you guys, here are some example questions. So what you might want to do is just copy these and give the kids these questions. You know, explain the concepts of this, and then if you want to give them a test, these are example questions that are taken right off my exam. Um, the problem I have with this is there's only so many ways I can draw a series in a parallel circuit. So, you know, I start handing this stuff out. You guys are going to, it becomes a memorization thing. Oh, I'll look at Dan's last three handouts for the last three years, and you'll know every single question that I have on my you know, I probably have a bank of 250 questions, and I ask anywhere from 150 to 200 on the county exam. So there's not a lot of extra stuff that. Uh, so I would love to help you, and this kind of gives you a guideline that I do draw some circuits, and then I ask them if the light bulbs come on. Um, I do have some circuits here where I ask if they're series or parallel or series parallel. So as you get up to speed on series and parallel, that would be something that's good. Right here, I do have some true false stuff, you know, just some safety stuff. Why tighten your power lines, safe, unsafe? Okay. Yeah. I think there's a workshop in February. Yes, there yes. is. Yes, and there's also a workshop. Yes, yes February 7th. Okay. Yes. But if it's, I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything, but if it's going to be something like this, yes, where I'm walking in feeling like I'm in advanced French and I don't know how to say hello in French. Yes, yes. yes. Like I need to, like I need to know where to go for, be, like beginner, beginner. Um, when you meet with the girls, just go online. 
Yeah, I'm just just Google uh, circuits um, and uh, um, uh, series circuits and parallel circuits, and there are tons and tons of grade school, uh, middle school stuff that is uh, great to great to learn this the, the basic concept of this. That's why I include some of these questions to kind of give you that. But yes, if you want to start off that level, the best thing you can do is just come online. Yep. When you're building with like an LED, how do you know which one's positive and which one's negative? Like when you hook it up to the wires, basically. Let me ask the electricians here. I always get this wrong, but the kids know it. Which one's longer? One of the leads is longer on the LEDs. Do you guys uh, remember uh, which one's uh, positive and which one's negative? Uh, which, uh, I don't want to give you the wrong information, so I'm not going to tell you. But if you look at this, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, one is about an eighth of an inch longer than the other. That's the best way to tell. Okay, so that's that's it right there. That's that's the that's the only way to tell on an LED. If you see it on the circuit, it's much easier because there's a plus minus. Yes. Uh, it's an example case. Here, um, the south like a seven stage. Yes, I have usually have like seven stations. Seven stations. Yes. So I, the, the first page is uh, eight stations. Yeah. Well, it, uh, how many is on here? Let's uh, see. One, two, three. Well, this could be combined. So uh, one, two, three. But but uh, like seven. I could have this and this at one station. So I mean, it doesn't necessarily. I, I grouped it not by station, but I grouped it by types of questions. Kind of it. I think yes, it's a kind of it's a station, right? Basically. Yeah. So this could be one station, this could be another station, this could be a third station. Yes. Yeah. There won't never be like the kids won't have to construct at two different circuits. How many questions typically at the station? How many what? How many questions? It's a station. I can only put at county I will ask a hundred questions. At, 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 uh, for the zip grade, and then there will be the draw, and then there will be the construct. So that's five, five stations will have 100 questions. So about 20, some have 10 really hard questions, some have 20 really easy questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that type of thing. okay, yes. Oh, let me, I'll, I'll get you. So you want to know which one? Does the arrow indicate the way the electricity is going to be here? Yeah, I wish I could draw on the boards. You get in here. Probably. But, uh... If it's not in here, Electrons are going to flow this way. And this is a confusing thing about, and this is why I don't ask this question. Electrons flow from negative to positive. Current flows from positive to negative. So, <laughs> electrons flow from negative to positive, current flows from positive to negative, okay? And I won't ask you either of those questions because it gets very, very confusing. You just have to know that current is flowing in your circuit, all right? Doesn't make any difference what direction, but other than with the LED, you got to make sure that it's flowing right with that. But yeah. Uh, for the resistances, this will most likely be good enough. I will include this at the at the districts. Now, if I get seventy five percent of the kids with ninety percent of the questions correct, I got to make that section a little bit tougher. So I might have them memorized. If I do have to do that, I will put it on the website that they are going to have to memorize. But right now, last year, I said the exact same thing, and a lot of the kids did very, very badly on this. This is kind of hard to memorize for some people, and so chances are, I will tell you, probably 90% that if they can read this, and this is in a cheat sheet, if they can read this, they will get 100%. All the answers they need for that section are on here. So that's why I'm a little bit leery because, you know, this is a test where kids have to have a score and if they're all getting 100. But are they? I mean, you've, you've done that with some code for a couple of years. I mean, kids still have to think about, you know, two digits or three digits. And yeah. then the, there's the multiplier. So, I mean, they still mess up. Yeah, but typically I won't have an answer that's 28, 280, or 2,800. Usually it's 280, 430, or 960. So it's like, 
go. If they can get one digit, maybe two, they're going to get it just by. But by you could. It. Yes, I could, but I mean. But you're trying to avoid multiplication. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I look, you know, if the kids don't know how to multiply real good, if they see 2.8 and then they don't know if it's 280 or, or two, uh, 280,000, mm -hmm. they can say that's not too late, that that's good. You know? But I do kind of expect them to know the tolerance, plus or minus 5%, plus or minus 10%. As they get older, that becomes important. Right now, it's just something that they memorize. And there are one or two questions on that. Any other questions? Yeah. There is a workshop for charged up yes. on February 10th. Yes. Um, an email should have went out to all of the coaches, or at least the head coaches. Uh, it will be posted on Facebook as well. Uh, it's February 10th from 6 to 7 at MISD. Um, and free registration is appreciated. Yeah, that's just south of Macomb Community mm -hmm. College on Garfield there. Um, Yes. Yeah. And I do it usually every three, four years. This is the last year I'm doing this, so they're hoping that I can pass as much knowledge along as possible. And they typically videotape this. So there are videos of me giving this presentation, I think, on the website, or at least parts of it. There are parts of the the last training workshop that I had. So uh, there's a lot of information on that website. You can just go to that website and try to learn stuff. So hopefully that will give you up this meeting quickly. So I can't tell you. I'm going to need a lot of